Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is day two of the session 2022. Before we do this, can you please reward all my terribly hard work? It's not hard work, is it really walking around at magic convention, pointing cameras at things? Um, but do it anyway, go and check out onlinemagic.co. Do that after watching this. Uh, onlinemagic.co, as many of you will know, most of you is my online magic course. I'm very proud of it. It's very good, but I would say that. Find out for yourself, read the testimonials, all that kind of stuff. Uh, check it out. And do like and subscribe and share this. If you think this would be valuable to anybody you know, please tell them, send them a link, even share it on the socials if you like. That'd be lovely. Thanks. So yesterday was a good day. It was great. Uh, it's really good to to kind of be fresh today and yesterday. The day before, I was it was a <laughs> it was a long old day. So it's uh, which was not because of the convention, because of my state of mind, because of me thinking I was all young and um, could stay up late the night before. None of that last night. So uh, saying that, I think I went to bed at twenty past twelve, which is pretty pretty rock and roll. I think you'll find. So I, the day started yesterday with one of the sessions again, where, as I said, you get free uh, performers, speakers, and the first was Caroline Raven, which was a really nice surprise. Now, I'm not saying I thought it was going to be awful, but you read in the, in the schedule, don't you, and you kind of go, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, it's not going to be very good for me. Um, Caroline Raven is, of course, a very good magician and very, very good on the old socials. And she was talking about social media magic, or not social media magic, but your social media presence profile, all that kind of thing. And of course, I know all sorts, I, all of that, don't I? I know all sorts of things about that because I'm on YouTube and that. I'm terrible at it. I'm, I'm shocking. My brain can't deal with the different ways of doing things. There's so many things you can do with social media. You know, do, do you concentrate on TikTok? Um, Twitter, no, probably. Um, Instagram, and you know what works better, what's the best way to do it. And I like to think I know everything, but I really don't. And also, with all the different ways you can do things, it is totally overwhelming for a lot of people. And her talk was really, really good. It was really insightful. What I think I will find so helpful is that she had like... Um, uh, spreadsheets kind of thing to to say good things good good ways of creating content and ideas to create content and and kind of timetable of what you could create in, in like 30 days of content creation or something like that that wasn't what it was called but it was a kind of roadmap and I think there's something really valuable in that and I looked at that and I thought right actually I'd like to see that and have that and I'm going to chat to her today to guide me because my brain goes in so many different directions and I think any of you trying to kind of create a social media presence, which is really important. It's not just a vanity thing. It's important for our businesses and, you know, helping us get to where we want to go and also gives us a place to perform when we might not have anywhere to perform. So in lockdown, it kind of did feel like performing when I was doing social media stuff. So, you know, it's not the same, but it, it, it kind of it feeds that same thing. So I think it's a lot more important than a lot of us think. And I, I'm going to really follow up on that stuff. So really good talk, really funny. She had a lovely moment where she's um, she even performed magic while she was giving birth to twins, and she's huge, two twins um, yet to yet to come out, and um, she's <laughs> she's performing magic, um, you know, in, in in what I think was the hospital as she's in labour. I don't know; it might have been just beforehand, but it was great, really, really nice to see. Then there was Ian Keeble. I met Ian Keeble. You might know him, he wrote Stand Up Magic. Is it called Stand Up Magic or Stand Up Comedy Magic? No, it's called Stand Up Magic, isn't it? No, no, it's not. It's called Stand Up, A Guide to Comedy Magic. That's what it's called. A uh, great book. And he is a, I saw him 20-odd years ago in Camden in a comedy club uh, doing magic. And it was just, I think he did a Bill to Lemon or something like that. Very, very funny. And I even remember some of the lines he did. It was great. And I met him in his most surreal gig in the world, again, around about that time, 20, 25 years ago where we were doing a gig for Sainsbury's. He was dressed as a ringmaster, a corporate video gig. I was up in a hot air balloon, uh, juggling three apples off the edge of a hot, hot air balloon, deadly, in Ross and Wye, being surrounded by helicopters filming it, with skydivers dressed as clowns, walking the plank, walking along a springboard off the hot air balloon, 
and skydiving off it. That was that gig. I wish they were all like that. It'd be great, wouldn't it? So uh, this talk was about his book or his work on hoaxes. He's written a book called Century of the Self. And I'm gutted because he said he was going to send it to me to review a while ago. And I said, look, I'm not going to get a chance to read it. I've got loads of magic books to get through. And it's not really a magic book. So uh, thank you, but I'm not going to get a chance. And I'm gutted because the talk was fascinating. It was about, I think it has 10 hoaxes in it or maybe eight. Don't quote me. Uh, famous hoaxes throughout the years that he's gone and researched and really interesting stories, very funny. One of them about a woman that claimed to be given birth. Um, one of them uh, giving birth. Well, <laughs> oh, what a ridiculous hoax. A woman claiming to give birth. <laughs> Not claiming to give birth. Claiming to give birth to rabbits. That's the thing. <laughs> oh, dear. That's an amazing hoax. It's a woman in... Um, yeah, down south, claims she, claim she gave birth. No, uh, so that's great. And uh, a famous hoax with a poltergeist from the 1800s, I think that was. Just guessing, probably wasn't. But do check out the book, Century of Deception. It's, it's I just found it so interesting. And he did a couple of lovely magic tricks in it. He did his newspaper prediction, which he performs, uh, which when he goes into performance mode, he's very funny, Ian. I'm not saying he's not usually funny, but it... it I've always enjoyed seeing him perform. And he also did a lovely rope trick, a sucker trick, to sort of highlight what a, what a hoax is and the connection with magic. So anyway, uh, Century of Deception. I might have said Century of the Self at the beginning. That's an Adam Curtis film, isn't it? Century of Deception. Check that out. And then Andy Gladwin came on and just did a belter of a... What a story. Talking about the story of him and the, and the Vanishing team chasing down... Uh, a website that is pirating magic material. And this is really important. And, you know, back in the day, if I'm totally admitting, yes, you know, I had the odd torrent and I had that file of 2,000 magic books, which I got and never looked at, you know, ages ago, it, when it was in its infancy. Now it's, a, and I'm not saying that's a good thing, but, you know, a few people did it and shared a few files and all that kind of stuff. But now it's a very different thing. There are websites, you know, it's, hours or sometimes minutes after people have produced digital content, selling it for next to nothing. And there are creators that are, that are just saying it's just not worth creating it now. So the, the story was amazing. If you get a chance to listen to it, it just had everything in it. It had humour, very, very funny stuff. And I'm not going to ruin it in case you see it, because I'm sure he will do it in other situations. Um, it had like espionage, <laughs> as they said, I think Magic Magazine called him the James Bond of Magic or something like that. And it was just a really good story. And everybody was just completely transfixed. I think it was, you know, a big round of applause afterwards. Um, and a really important message being that basically, yes, there are legal battles going on, but the only way we can stop it is to boycott it. And boycotting something like that is a lot easier than... You know, when I was growing up, people boycotting McDonald's. You kind of did it for, for, the, for the principle, really. You knew it wasn't going to stop anything we're, we're, with this. You know, we are a niche community, so it is, we could quite easily stop it by not buying it. So I think all of those sites, we know what they are, where you go on and you can buy a Vanish Link download for like two quid where, or a trick or something like that. Just don't do it, OK? That's the, that's the preachers I get. And um, I know it's tempting when you haven't got much money, but, you know... Magic will go downhill, creators will stop creating, and the creators I've talked about, people like Tobias, people like that, that are complete geniuses, it just won't be worth their while. So it will have a huge effect. So, you know, I'll get down off my high horse, but it's, um, but it's an important one. Nick Einhorn's lecture, I was really looking forward to it. Nick is just such a professional performer, as all of us should be when we are professional performers, but compared to me, he's very professional. He's just brilliant, but he's not only brilliant, he's, he thinks about the structure of his magic, but the structure of his commercial magic, his magic he performs. And it was a really enjoyable lecture. I knew it was going to be solid, I knew it was going to be good, but he did this lovely thing with uh, Amazon Prime, this sort of gag in a way with Amazon Prime when he came in and then kind of forgot about it and then called back to it later on with with a, an amazing way of getting into a book test, which totally made sense, was genuinely funny, and uh, and really, really smooth and really smart. And then did a, well, happened to do a book test, which is a book test with any book, 
uh, which was great. So someone can just get a book off the shelf and you can force a word on them and then use that word in whatever way you want. He used Digital Force Bag, which was his app and ways you can do that of kind of coming away from the app and not having it all about the app. Because I know with things like DFB and other apps, people worry that are people just going to think it's an app. But how to use that in a way that people just wouldn't know. And then he did a couple of other things. He did a lovely um, stand-up triumph with a dream card effect, which is was a really nice card to wallet with a different twist with a couple of kind of crescendos in it, which just made, you know, compared to my card to wallet, which is usually as a card, you know, do a few things with it, you know, bang it in a wallet. It just had more to it. And that sort of thing makes me think about what I'm doing and going, Steve, come on, you can do a little bit better than that. So I just had to cut it because a really horrible noise started. Um, and I will apologise for the weird lighting in here as well. I'm kind of, um, I just can't get it right. It's very odd. But anyway, um, back to Nick Ihon. <laughs> Uh, the highlight was he taught his spooked trick. Now, his spook trick, his spooked trick is his version that he came up with in the 90s of the haunted pack, the pack that cuts itself. And if you don't know it, the, the classic version is the, it can happen in your hand and the, the pack can move, which is a very basic version I learned years ago. So if someone chooses a card, goes back, you put it in your hand and it kind of cuts and moves a little bit and you pull the card out. You can do it on the table. There's a version of like that. I remember seeing him perform this. It completely blew me away. And I think it was the 90s, terrifyingly enough. Or it, no, maybe early 2000s. A trade show in London. And I didn't really know him then. I'd been introduced to him by Peter Wardell. The RSVP trade show, I think. Anyway, um, sorry, thinking aloud, <laughs> thinking aloud then. That was interesting, wasn't it? Where he, the card is chosen, he puts the deck on the floor, walks away from it, pack cuts itself and the card flies out the middle of the pack, literally goes bing, and jumps out onto the floor and it's the chosen card of the spectator. I remember seeing that and it completely floored me. I kind of knew about the red and things like that but I couldn't see where it was and the fact it was on the floor. He's never really taught this in a lecture. He sold it and obviously you, you get it in, in that context but you, you, I've never seen, you, he's never done it in a lecture so he decided to do that so after all his really you know, lovely commercial other magic he tipped that and explained it from beginning to end that you can do with a you know something you can go and buy so you didn't have to buy his thing and it was really great to see that actually because I didn't know I, I kind of knew the, the, the basics but didn't know how he did it and it's just brilliant what his work on it is really is this idea of the card sort of flying out and in the bar afterwards, um, him and, and Craig, his business partner, was, sh partner was showing, both showing me them doing it on, on the floor. And it was just flying out and spinning out across the floor. It just looked incredible. And there's a way you can do it where it always lands face up, where it kind of pops out of the pack. It's well worth seeing. And he, he had the lecture notes to have to put that together afterwards as well. And it, I'd kind of, that was a real joy to watch that. It made me want to go and stop being scared of performing such things because when you see him in the bar doing it again and again and again and him doing it you you realize that it's there's kind of nothing to be scared of and people that know what i'm talking about kind of know what i'm talking about just after that damien said oh do you want to come and, and watch the youth event now vanishing have this this um program where they have uh, you, young people come to the <laughs> the youths the, the youths uh young people come to the uh convention for free and there is a kind of group of them you know it's quite a significant group that kind of get to know each other and, and obviously get to know everybody uh, but it's really really lovely to see that, that they're all kind of here with their parents having a great time talking to magicians there's this lovely moment when me and Damien were doing the, res, res, the registration at the beginning of the event you know yesterday if you watched it I said I worked for that and helped them out doing that and this young, you know, I think he's like 10 years old, 11 years old or something, said, um, was really gutted that Hector Chadwick wasn't performing. And Damien said to him, yeah, but you know, you've got, you've got these other people and, and you can just go up to them and talk to them. And the kid said, what? So I could, I could just sort of say hello to Luke Germain. And as he said that, Luke Germain <laughs> stood next to him, just, just by chance came up. And he went like that. And the kid just went, <gasps> Like that was such a lovely moment that as he said it, Luke Jamea appeared, it was like the best magic trick in the world. And the response was just brilliant. And he, he was totally starstruck. It was great. And um, yeah, just a little story, just a lovely little piece of real magic for me that was, was delightful. 
But anyway, that event was great. Um, it was in one of the small rooms, got together, had small talks by uh, three magicians. Uh, Caroline Raven, again, did a lovely thing where she sit and did a trick, got some kids out and did a trick and was telling them about her approach to magic um, in, in, a, in a small interview. And it felt really intimate and nice. And then Matt Pritchard did a thing, a lovely balancing thing with all the things you can make at home and the science you can do with things at home that look like magic and explaining his approach as well, which was really great. And then I've, I keep getting, I'm so sorry, Sedlasek, that is the way to pronounce it, I think. Bernardo Sedlasek, I find that so hard to say. Sedlasek, it's not Sedlasek, yeah. Um, who did a lecture last night as well, but he did a an any questions thing and someone asked a question about palming and he had a lovely approach to palming actually, which was really good to see because it's something that I kind of think, yeah, and, but some people kind of go, oh no, you've got to be perfect. But it, it was, he was talking about actually covering certain palming techniques if you've got small hands with attitude and being relaxed and all that kind of thing. I'm not giving anything away. He went into more detail, but it was, again, really nice to see because obviously these kids have got small hands and a lot of them can't palm and they're going, do I even try? And it was really nice to see him kind of give that encouragement as well. It was a, a very, very lovely event and it felt really nice to go and, and be part of that and see that and and really warmed me that that kind of stuff is happening it's really really important I would have loved that as a kid it would have just just been a game changer for me um, but it might have even made me do magic because actually I didn't get into magic till about 18 <laughs> but you know what I mean uh, next was the Michael Vincent lecture very very different kind of you know to see Michael come out after what he's been through, you know, with completely loss of hearing, you know, last time I saw Michael, he was, his, his um, speech wasn't as, because obviously when he lost his hearing, his speech was affected. And obviously he's been through a completely, you know, a complete journey to get that back. And you, you just wouldn't know he's up there and he cannot hear anything, just incredible. So performing incredible, lovely, classic magic with that knowledge behind it, that professionalism, you know, it's, I think it's something that for, for kids to see is really important because it's the completely, well, it's not the complete, you know, flip side, but it's a very different approach to a lot of the stuff they seen, which is sort of snappy kind of, you know, when you see Bernardo doing this bang, 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 just amazing, which I absolutely adore, where this kind of slow, sort of considered approach, very, very considered, and with that, again, with those references behind him. For me, as I've said with card magic lectures, the performance of the tricks I love, when we get into the explanations, I do struggle in a lecture situation, but that is, I need to be in a small room or on my own with the cards in hand taking that away from me. Um, there's part of me when I watch Michael that obviously he's very serious, he's very charming. I just kind of, I said so, I just kind of want him to kind of just just kind of relax a little bit. It's like, it's like I, want, I want to see that sort of part of him that kind of laughs and kind of, I kind of want to hear him swear. That sounds like an awful thing to say. And I don't, but you know what I mean? It's kind of, it's so, it's so kind of considered that there's part of me that just wishes there was a couple of moments of, of just kind of like, I just have a bit of a laugh and yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, I, I'm, I'm not communicated that well at all, but you know what I mean? It's, um, but it's wonderful, it's professional, and I was with my friend CJ from Nevada, and you know, the, you know, the queue of people afterwards just adored it. So it's, um, it's, it's really solid stuff. And by the way, if you ever want to sort of uh, increase your knowledge of magic, watch those Alakazam DVDs. There's four of them, I think. You'll know the ones, they're sort of double DVD, triple DVD sets, um, Pathway to Mastery, or something like that. I could know, I can't remember, but they're just full of amazing stuff and they'll give you such a, a solid grounding as will a lot of his work. Uh, Luke Jamey. So Luke was doing card magic and he was admittedly doing card magic that he doesn't do. He said he, he doesn't do this in a show. He's, he put this card magic together to provide teaching that can be transferred to other parts of magic and as he says you know, if you learn your stuff, if you learn your classics of card magic, you'll be able to use that in your mentalism. You, it, it kind of, it cross-pollinates. And does he know his stuff? I mean, I knew, everybody knows that Luke Germain, you know, he, from so young, he's just been so knowledgeable. But 
his referencing and his, you know, that constant thing of, well, that's a tribute to that, but actually back in the day it was more. And he just, not, and to, to hear that and to see Tricks perform, that even though he might not do them, uh, belters. I mean, the tricks he did were just incredible. They, he didn't do loads. He did one that was a really involved, had loads of different slights in it. And again, for someone we see as a mentalist doing this, you know, a lot of different slights, a lot of stuff going on, but I didn't see any of it, not one bit, because every single movement he made, as he talked about later, there was a reason for, and you saw no sleight of hand that you weren't meant to see. You saw none of the stuff going on. So that was a, a, a real lesson. But also his delivery. He said at one point in it that he isn't funny. He's really funny. Luke's really funny because Luke isn't trying to be really funny all the time. So when, when something comes out that is funny, and as he said, there's usually a reason for it, it really works because it's, it's, he's, he's got, there's something about his delivery that I could watch him talk about car magic. And when he was talking about the, how the tricks were done, he wasn't talking about it so you can follow along and do it. It was talking about it because I do this because of this. And I learned a great deal from it. He got a standing ovation at the end quite rightly. He said he was nervous about doing, the, doing it. And I, I can understand that because again, that trick that he did had so much in it. Again, I'm not gonna go through every single thing he did. But I've said this about a lot of stuff, but if you ever think, see a thing going, oh, Luke Jermaine's lecturing about car magic, go and see it. Everybody loved it. It was, I don't want to say this because he's lectured, done some incredible lectures on mentalism, but it, I, for me, it was the best lecture that I'd ever seen him do, not because it was car magic, because I love car magic, because it was a really different approach to it. Bernardo Sedlasek, I think that's how you say it. So everybody's been talking about uh, Bernardo being the new Danny de Ortiz. And I think what they mean by that is, you know, every few years or every now and then there's this person that kind of, you know, is going to be the one that, you know, when I first saw Danny de Ortiz, I felt that everybody saw it and something had shifted. It was, it felt like something different, even though, you know, the, the mannerisms and that kind of um, Spanish school of the, that way of doing things, you know, isn't new, but the, the magic itself and the, the energy of it, I absolutely loved and still do. I actually, a lot of people said that Bernardo's stuff was very similar and his demeanour was very similar. I didn't, I found it different actually. Bernardo's from Brazil, he is from that school, he's, you know, he's got that inspiration and that teaching. But I, for me, it did feel a bit different. The material was similar in the way that it was working on old concepts. The stuff I, I, the thing I loved about Danny's stuff is he was fooling a, a hall of magicians with old kind of almost semi-self-working uh, concepts. Not that he wasn't having very difficult sleight of hand around it, but you know, we, we know that there's the skill there as well. But going back to that, and Bernardo went back to kind of tricks like the tantalizer from Royal Road to Car Magic, which he, he got a great reaction from because we all forget how good that stuff is. And I remember that, I know, because I'm, you know, teaching that course and building a, a Royal Road course on my course on online magic. And you forget how amazing that stuff is. He's taking that and he's also using that to get into other tricks. He's I'm, he's really good at kind of going, I'm going to use this trick to make sure the cards are in a certain state for this trick and then I can come and, and he's kind of creating a, a, a process. But what I really liked about this lecture that it wasn't all trick, 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 trick. I've told you, if you teach me three tricks and you show them to me, brilliant, explain the theory behind them, brilliant. Once you start going through the process, I'm, I'm kind of, I need to, I can't really deal with it, like I said. Now he did do that at the end and again, I was kind of not, uh, less interested in that. But what I was interested in was how the any card at any number he did afterwards was done because that completely fooled me and floored me and it was brilliant. And again, when he told you how that was done, I wasn't interested in going off and doing it, but looking at why things happened. He talks about theory, he talks about it with passion, he talks about it with knowledge. He's so young, but he knows his stuff, he, he knows his, his references, he's done his reading and he's actually putting together a kind of book list with a reference for people, which he, he said in the Young Magicians thing that he's going to send to them. So I really, really enjoyed it. Again, another card magic lecture, which I really enjoyed. Again, less, less interested in the this is how it's done bit, but that was kind of only at the end, more interested in the why this is how it's done, if you see what I mean. Uh, he, he had a masterclass thing that he was selling afterwards, which I really wanted, but it's kind of expensive, justifiably. Um, but hours of his stuff on it, apparently, which would be well worth seeing. And then he did this, uh, yeah, completely fooled me with a blank deck trick at the end. 
Um, I'm easy to fool though, I am, I'm a bit of an idiot like that. So uh, not that you have to be an idiot to be fooled by that, but I am easy to fool, but then I talked to everybody and everybody was fooled by it. And it was non equivocate So he was saying, right, reds or blacks, you are going to get rid of one. We're not doing that thing where, which one do you want to get rid of? Okay, you sure you want to get rid of that one? So he went down to one card, showed all the cards blank, and there was one card in there, and that was the card they got to, which completely fooled me. Don't know how it was done. Uh, was very tempted to buy that, but I've got to be a good boy. Uh, so that was it, I think. Um, yes, very rambly again, but it will give you an idea of what went on. If you want me to talk in any more detail about anything, I do feel that each of these could have had a kind of review of their own, but that would take me forever, but at least it gives you an idea. There's probably loads I've missed out. There are dealers today. A lot of people have asked me about the products. It is dealers day to day. They only have dealers here on a Sunday, which I quite like, and they don't have loads of them. But I will kind of report back on that, probably not tomorrow. I'm driving back, so I'll do day three as soon as I can. So uh, have a great one. Thank you so much. I'm sure there was something I was going to say other than check out onlinemagic.co and uh, like and subscribe. Anything else? Oh, I'm sure I had a thing. I'm sure I had a thing to say. No. Bye.